let's see what the current ladies have to say about troubles in their own lives and, and how they cope. Welcome, ladies. So glad to have you here with us Hi, today. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, you know, when we talk about troubles, and I'm, it's hard for me to talk about troubles because mine are so minuscule. They're really nothing compared to what our guest today is going to be going through, but they're still ours. We still have trouble. We need to own up to the fact that we do have our troubles in our lives. But let's kind of focus a little bit today on mental illness, because that's a whole other kind of a, um, a situation that some people have to deal with. Have, have you, and this is a personal question, <laughs> but have any of you ladies dealt with mental illness, maybe either in your families or in your circles of influence? Anybody? Well, if you ask my husband, he would probably say me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, we've all battled. Yeah, I think we've all battled. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even know in my own life I've battled a lot of depression, which mm -hmm. I know, you know, but if it's not taken care of, it can be a mental illness. Oh, and I is. think, yeah. you know, when you're in the middle of that battle of just watching somebody going through, I know that the people who were around me watching, they wanted to pull me out. Mm -hmm. But really, sometimes you, you, you have to pick your own self up, get in the word. I had to battle it out on my own. Mm -hmm. And it was just me and God coming mm -hmm. to Jesus going, I need help. So you I were able help. to do that without chemical depend or, Well, or I tried to do the chemicals, you know, but they made me feel so so bad and mm -hmm. I also made a decision in my life that said you know I don't want to live my life on chemicals. Mm -hmm. If things are that bad, I need to do something to get a hold of it. I mm -hmm. got a grasp. And so I want to tell you, that would be a whole long time. I went through a really long journey of just really learning to take captive every thought. Mm -hmm. And I realized that was the beginning. The battle was in my mind. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And I'm not kidding. I ward up. I ward up what I watched what I listened to on the radio. I had four by six cards all over my house of scriptures and positive things that said, my God shall supply all my needs. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Cause I felt like I had a broken record. Mm -hmm. The enemy was lying to me and I was feeding it. So I feel like all the enemy has to do is to plant a seed and then all of a sudden I take it and feed it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have the saying is what you're feeding is getting fat. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so, man, I just began to war. And every time a mm -hmm. thought would come to my mind, I'd say, no, enemy, you're a liar. I am more than a conqueror. I am mm -hmm. more than enough. So. And I think yeah. that's what we all yeah. need to be doing. And that's mm -hmm. great yeah. advice. But I also want to be sure that our viewers here today, that there are some people who do have a chemical imbalance. And right. it would we absolutely medical require medical that's right. intervention. Right. Right. So, you know, great. even with that, we still need to take captive every thought. Yeah. yeah. Well, I so appreciate your honesty. Yes. And yeah. I think there's such stigma against mental illness mm -hmm. in absolutely. this country. Yeah. And, you know, if, if somebody has cancer in their family, people mm -hmm. address it and people mm -hmm. talk about it. People can talk about that kind of physical sickness, but people don't talk about mental illness in the same way. And I think it's so important to yeah. be vulnerable and yeah. to share and to say, you know, I've got a problem with this or I have a problem with that, but to be able to talk about it because we can't become educated. We can't relate. We can't identify with one another unless we have the opportunity to share and listen and say, gosh, maybe we're not in the same boat or somebody's going through the same thing that I'm going through. And I'm glad you yeah. say that because when when you're in the middle of it, you already feel weak. I mean, depression mm -hmm. is what it is, and yeah. it is a sickness. You already feel weak, and so you feel like you're being a burden to people. You feel like, so a lot of times those people don't reach out, and those who are dealing with people who are in the middle of sickness, they'll, they feel alone. Mm -hmm. They feel alone, and I just yeah. appreciate us being able to talk about this mm -hmm. today because they need to know they're not alone mm -hmm. and that it's not a weakness, that it is a sickness just like cancer. Mm -hmm. and, you need help. Yeah. And that's how the enemy works. I mean, he wants to isolate us and he wants to make us feel that we can't get out of it. And, you know, there comes to the point, like you said, and I struggled at a very young age in talking about, you know, a parent-daughter relationship and a parent-father relationship. My parents were terrified when I was going through everything I was going through, but they made a decision to wrap their arms around me. And, you know, we discovered all kinds of things in that journey. And I think when I finally got to the point of saying, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, that I do need help, um, that God is going to get me through this, that I had to come to the point of wanting that accountability. And, you know, it's the battlefield of the mind and a, a great resource for our viewers and parents that may have troubled teens or, or children that are going through mental illness is to read The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce yeah. Myers. That book for me, it was the best gift my mom had ever given me outside of a journal because it told me 
who I was, that I was a spirit, I had a soul, and I just lived in a body. And so much of the things in the world, the attacks are constantly coming. And like you said, those vain imaginations. You know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against wickedness, against powers and darkness in high places. And we have to take those lies and put them in their place and replace them with truth and God, God's truth towards us and how he feels about us. And it can be an arduous journey for a parent with a, a troubled teen, whether it's suicidal thoughts or depression or if they're cutting or whatever it is and you know you have to have the right help around you and be willing to ask for it whether it's medical obviously spiritual yeah. help and accountability but there is hope God is able to bring you through it and I, I want to encourage the parents that are watching today that are going through it there's hope for you I mean I mm -hmm. see the restoration in my mom and dad's relationship and you know the greater the attack the greater the blessing that's coming forth and when there is that purpose inside the enemy wants to steal it kill it and destroy it yeah. and so we have to pray like never before the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, we're supposed to pray without ceasing. I know sometimes even like Barbara said, prayer doesn't seem like it's enough, you know, but yes, we need the tools, we need the prayer, we need the accountability, but we've got to hold on to that hope that God is going to walk us through it. And sometimes it's moment by moment. You and I know when you're going through depression, you don't want to open the curtains or you don't, you feel so paralyzed, you can't even step outside the door. Yeah. That's real pain. It is. And, um, but God has real hope for that. And, and he has to walk us through it and we have to have that accountability. It's key. Mm -hmm. I love that you touched on spirit, soul, and body, yes. because I just learned about that this past spring. I, mm -hmm. I never had it explained to me or spelled out that we are comprised of those three things. Yeah. And that often we're led by our soul or we're mm -hmm. led by our body, but really we need to be filled with the spirit right. and led by the spirit and have the Holy Spirit come out through us. Mm -hmm. And that was such a picture to me. And I love that you just mentioned that mm -hmm. because it's such a visual of an indwelling of the Holy Spirit to lead us versus our emotions, or our mind, or our body, and our physical nature. And you know, that's the tough part of it, is when you're in the middle of the battle, and I know there's people out there today that are in the middle of the battle that God seems so far away, mm -hmm. like you want to be spirit, mm -hmm. but you can't hear Him, you can't see Him, and sometimes it feels like the other voices are so loud, loud yeah. and it's very real. And they just need to know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing is if I could tell anybody that's going through any kind of mental illness or any, and they're not communicating about it, they need to find somebody to talk to. It mm -hmm. doesn't make them weak. Mm -hmm. Talking about it makes you strong. And you're probably going to realize there's a lot more people that are going through it than what you realize. Yeah, because mm -hmm. very few yeah. people are going to say in a prayer group, well, I know right. Leanne, you right. meet with your prayer group every <laughs> right. Friday morning. Yeah. Right. And rarely does somebody say, guys, could you pray for me? Because I've got a mental illness. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> that just rarely right. happens. Right. And yet, how many of us probably right. have mental illnesses? We all do to some degree. Right. We all battle. Yeah. We battle. It's well, just we whether do. it's debilitating you to the point of you can't get out of bed or you're working through it. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that's the hope. Right. What we talk about is yeah. God can work you through right. it and walk you through it. But that comes with that maturity. You you know, it's a process. And I, I especially love the honesty because mm -hmm. until we get honest with ourselves and decide, you know, here is what I'm dealing with. And so we may not at prayer group talk about my mental illness, but somebody will say, I'm really struggling with fear or I'm mm -hmm. really struggling because my child is in in trouble or whatever. Mm -hmm. We are soup. We lay it out there. And I do think, um, I think society is better than it used to be. I feel like when I was growing up, things were a little more hush hush. Mm -hmm. I feel like these days people do kind of tell all and you kind of yeah. see it a little more, mm -hmm. but I think that's healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I had a partner, uh, um, a friend in business, um, and he was going through mental, some mental illness and he came clean with us. And it was, you know, he had some bipolar issues mm -hmm. and we had mm -hmm. no idea. I didn't mm -hmm. understand why he would be upset one day and then fine mm -hmm. the next day, you know? And, and then as he got on medication, I was like, wow. I mean, there is something really real to this that we can't see. You just can't mm -hmm. see it. You know, right. Some of our diseases, you know, they're, they're clear, but right. mental illness is hard to well, And I think it's real on. important for us to say as a panel today, and, and I love the hope thing and you're not alone and all of that, because that's what gets people through. But right. this mom, I've read her book that, that I'm going to be talking to later on in the show. She will deal with this problem until her dying day or right. until her daughter's dying day. And so it's not like there's a quick fix right. for any of this, for mental illness. Your friend at work, Leanne, he probably is on medication and will be yes. for the rest mm -hmm. of his life. Right. And right. so I'm sure there are people who are dealing with mental illness or the caretakers who say, there is no hope, but there is hope. Yeah. And sometimes it's only going to get better 
when we get to eternity. Right. You know, I, right. I used to say that with my dad. He was so, so sick and I would pray for his healing, but the healing was not going to take place on this earth. Right. The right. healing was going to eventually take place. So I hope that's an encouragement to viewers mm -hmm. today. And hope for the moment. I think hope that's the, the key. Moment. It's yeah. just yeah. hope for the moment to, to accept it for what it is. It's not that you have a lack of faith, but it's owning the journey that God has you on and receiving his supernatural grace and peace in the mm -hmm. midst of, God, what are you trying to show me through my child that's battling with mental yeah. illness? What right. are you trying to reveal to me? And so I, that's what yeah. I pray for our viewers. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I, I think the biggest thing for me is I want to pray for her. Yeah. Because it's, sometimes yeah. it's the caretaker sure. that right. gets put on the side and right. really she needs to understand that when, when someone is sick, the whole family takes the, mm -hmm. they take the brunt of it too. And I don't yeah. mean the brunt because it's all a blessing. You can make it through, but it's just praying for her that she has some yeah. prayer warriors like Leanne and all of us. It's just yeah. getting that support group around you that gives you that moment where you can get away and have your own yeah. time with God. I mean, she needs to keep her own self filled up Absolutely. or she's going to drain her own self I down. I know you yeah. all do a lot of homework to get ready for these current um, sessions together. And one of the things that you do is look up great scripture mm -hmm. and we don't really have time to go through everybody's scripture, but one or two of you, you want to encourage us with a final scripture mm -hmm. before we close out this ahead, segment? Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to steal hers because it's my very favorite mm -hmm. one. It's Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just walking side beside your children, whether it's really bad or whether it's just a little bit of trouble for the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I really love um, Psalm 34, 18, which is the Lord is near to the brokenhearted mm -hmm. and saves yeah. those who are crushed in the spirit. I love that. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not crushed in spirit today, we will be at some point. Right. So, this morning. <laughs> thank you, yeah. ladies, for being a part of our panel today. And we do need to be in prayer for those of us who are either going through it ourselves or know somebody who's going through a mental illness. So I'm um, so appreciative of the insight and the wisdom that you gave us today. So, um, Courtney, you want to share how people can get in touch with the current Absolutely. panel? Absolutely. Well, we love to hear from you. And if you are battling with mental illness yourself or you have a family member that is, we want to pray for you. So make sure you connect with us on our current Facebook page or Instagram and stay in touch for the next current Ladies Night Out coming out. We want to get out of our set into your sanctuary and just love on you, um, just spread the hope of Jesus and hear your hearts and build a strong community of current women in the city.